Welcome back. In this session, we will look at step four of the process of curation in the context of education. Organizing the learning resources we have found using techniques like algorithmic, social and personal filtering, looking at open educational resource repositories and massive open online courses or MOOCs. If you have been trying your hand at using some of these techniques, you may be feeling that it is all a little overwhelming. You start reading or viewing one online resource and get a reference or a hyperlink to another, which in turn leads you to a third resource and so on. You witness the deluge of information firsthand, which can be overwhelming. To address this problem, we will look at tools that can help you make your curation journey more systematic so that you can keep track of what you found useful. For this, there are several free online tools available. Two popular free tools are Digo and Evernote. We will take a deeper look at using Digo. Let's head to www.digo.com. Digo describes itself as a powerful online research tool and collaborative research platform that integrates several key technologies, including social bookmarking, web annotation, tagging, and group-based collaboration to enable a whole new process of online knowledge management and participatory learning. Digo offers free upgrades to educators. You can check more information by clicking the link here. You could view the video tutorial on what Digo offers by clicking the Take a Tour button present on the top navigation bar. Digo offers free, basic and premium service. For most of us, their free service should suffice and which is what I am going to explore in this session. First of all, you will need to create a user account. For this, click Join Digo button on the top navigation bar and fill in the form. Digo will send you a verification email. Click the link given in the email and you are ready to start using Digo. Next, depending on the browser you are using, you will need to install an extension on Chrome browser or you will need to drag the Digo let button to your Safari browser or install the full feature Digo toolbar on Firefox browser. Once this is done, whenever you are browsing, you can bookmark pages, highlight parts, capture a screenshot, send the link to your friends or to your Facebook or Twitter account, save the page for later reading and more. Let's look at some of these features. Let's say we are looking for good books on financial literacy, the second case we looked at earlier. So we search Google for books on financial literacy. We click on a link and arrive at a page on a website. If we find the page useful for what we are curating, we can add a bookmark by clicking the bookmark link on the Digo toolbar. A box pops up and Digo automatically adds the URL and title of the page. By default, the bookmark is public, but you can make it private by checking this box so that only you can view it. You can edit the title and add a description, which could be a summary or a short explanation why you found the resource useful. You can also add tags so that later you can search your Digo library based on tags you've created. Click the more options button and here you can add the bookmarks to a list. You can create a new list and once you have several lists based on your interests, then when you click the drop down, you will be able to choose which list you want to add the bookmark to. Let's call our list financial literacy because that is what we are curating on. You can make the list private or public. You can also save the resource for later reading or update the cache. That is, save a copy of the page on Digo. You can also tweet this bookmark. You can also create a group where you can add members and whenever you add a new resource to a group, all the group members will get an email that a new resource has been added. This is a very useful feature for collaborative learning or 
where you want to keep your learners posted on new learning resources that you add to the group. Let's create a group called Financial Literacy. Digo creates a group URL based on the name you give. You can add a description to the group and choose an appropriate category. You can then choose to keep the group public or private. Make the group searchable by search engines. Give rights on who can join the group and who can invite new members. Once you've made your selection, you need to fill the CAPTCHA words. This is a check against spam and it makes sure that there is a human user filling the form. Oops, it seems the name Financial Literacy is already taken. Let's try a different name, Financial Literacy for K-12. Description and selection remain as before and we fill the CAPTCHA again. And we have created a group. We can now add the emails of members we wish to invite and write a message for them. Once they accept the invite, they will be members and every time you add a link, all the members will get an email that a new resource has been added. When you go back to the page you have bookmarked, the color of the bookmark button changes to red to show you that this page has already been bookmarked on Digo. Let's now look at the highlight feature. This is similar to using a highlighter while reading a document. You can choose a color and select what you want to highlight on a page. Once a selection has been highlighted, when you hover the mouse on the highlight, a button appears. Clicking on this button opens more options. You can add a sticky note, delete the highlight, get the annotated link or view the link in your Digo library. Let's add a sticky note. This could be a message to self or it could be a note to your students as to why you have highlighted this part of the page. Next time you hover on the top button on the highlighted section, your sticky note will pop up. Let's now look at the screen capture feature that Digo offers. You can either capture the whole page or part of the page. We will capture part of the page. As soon as we release the mouse after capturing, a toolbar pops up which allows different types of annotations. You can add arrows in different colors to point out something specific or you can circle content or box some content to draw attention. You can also add a text annotation. You can then save this capture in Digo by clicking on the floppy disk button. This is how the screen capture appears, complete with your highlight and other annotations. You can send the page link to your Twitter or Facebook. You can get the annotated link to the page, which gives you a link to share the page with all your highlights and sticky notes. And you can also extract just your annotations from the page. You can keep creating lists and groups. And while you are surfing, if you come across a resource that is relevant to your interest area, you can add it to your list and or share it with your group, complete with all your highlights and annotations. Let me show you my library on Digo. These are the tags I have added to my curated resources and clicking on these tags will show all the resources I have tagged with the particular keyword. These are my lists, areas of my interest and while I'm surfing, I keep adding relevant resources to these lists. For example, this is my list titled Art of Content Curation, where I have added links that are relevant to this course. I can get the PERMA link to this page in my Devo library and share it on my blog. Or I can email a link to this page. Or I can tweet the link or share it with various share services. I can also print, edit or delete this page. You can view my list on content curation here. www.digo.com slash list slash atulpant slash art of content curation. Art of content curation is hyphenated. I hope this gives you a good sense on what Digo has to offer and how you can use it while you are curating learning resources. Digo is also available as an app for smartphones and tablets like the iPad. Another great tool to organize your curated resource is Evernote. 
Evernote also offers free and premium services. You can visit their website www.evernote.com for more information and how to use the service. Evernote is also a cloud-based knowledge and documentation management service and is available for PCs, Macs, smartphones and tablet computers. That brings us to the end of this session on organizing curated learning resources. In the next session, we will look at how a curator needs to add context to the curated resources to make them more meaningful to the intended audience and what tools are available to present these resources elegantly. While presenting the curated resources, the objective in the context of education could also be to create a learning community where a conversation can take place around the curated content as also collaborative activities are possible. Conversation and collaboration lead to deeper comprehension. More about this in the next session.